Hello, my name is Lance Culver and this is going to be a tie flow tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create an effect like this. It's procedural, so once it's set up, it can be applied to any object. I first seen an effect similar to this some time ago, but it was made completely with tie flow script, but it can be made without any script at all. And I thought the process of it would make a good lesson and it's super easy, so here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start by going to create extended primitives chamfer box. Let's create a small box here, doesn't really matter. But I'm going to resize it to five centimeters. And I'm also going to create a box. Resize this to 30 centimeters. And I'm going to create a tie flow. And open editor. And then drag out a birth voxels. And pick the box. All right, so here under the birth boxes, I'm gonna increase the size to 10. Now I'll change the display to geometry. Next, I'm gonna add a shape operator and pick the chamfer box. All right. Okay, I'm gonna add a scale. I'll reduce the size of that to let's say 20%. Maybe 19%. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some of these cubes empty spaces, and some of them are going to be the cubes that we see. So I'm going to use a split to do that. I'll just create a copy of this display and drag it into a new event and connect that to the split. And I'm going to change the color. All right, and I will rename this event find spaces. All right, I'm going to drop a shape remove in here beneath the split operator and a send out. Switch out this size and then I'm going to also create a new event with this display. I'm going to change the color to red and rename it empty spaces and connect that to the send out. All right, so now I have two sets of particles and I need to have these cubes target these particles, but first I'm gonna go ahead and move the pivots to the center of these cubes, make it a little easier to visualize and just drop that above the split operator. All right, so in order to have these cubes target these red particles, I need to put them in a simulation group. I just drag in a particle groups operator in here beneath the split and place them on group one. And I'm going to drag a set target in here to the find spaces event. I'm going to change the target to by proximity, enable prevent duplicate assignments. Under target filters, select simulation group one, which is these red particles. And then the radius, just create a tape measure. Measure between two of these particles is 9.995, just a little more than that probably. So I can say search within a radius of 10.2. And this 10.2 will allow it to select a particle that's above it, beneath it, or beside it, but not one that's diagonal from it. That would be outside that radius. And I also wanna change the neighbor selection to random and I want to change the timing to continuous so that on some frames, cubes will not be able to find an empty space to move to. So I need this to execute every frame so that when that empty space becomes available, the cube will be able to target it. I need to check for when it does have a target and I can do that with a property test. I'm going to change the test type to has valid target. I want to say if it's greater than zero, and change the channel to target. Now I can drop a spawn operator into a new event, but rename this event move to target and connect that to the property test. We don't want to see these particles. They're going to take the place of these red particles and will become the new targets for the cube we actually see. So we'll go ahead and grab this display, drop it into a new event, and rename this one Visible Cube. And I 
and connect that to the spawn. Change the color. I'm going to add a shape remove in here. And then I'm going to add a move to target. These particles target are the empty spaces particles. So this move to target has moved it into the position of these red particles. So now I want to delete those red particles with a delete operator. And I can change the delete method to target. It's deleted, it's target particles. So this removes the red particle out of the equation so it cannot be targeted later. It might not make sense just yet, but it will in just a second, I promise. All right, in the visible cube event, I'm going to add a set target. Change the target to parent. To add a move to target. We'll decrease the interpolation to something like 0.35 and the variation of maybe 45%. Alright, I also need to check to see when it's arrived at its target. And I can do that with a property test. Just change the test type to distance to target. Say if it is less than something small like 0 0.02, and change the channel to target. Take a copy of this display and create a new event. And I'm going to change the color, connect that to the property test and rename it at target position. Okay, when it arrives at its target, add a delete operator and delete the target particle, which would also be the parent particle, but I'm just gonna select target. I can add a spawn operator in here to the visible cubes event. I think I create a new event here. I'm gonna rename this original position. Connect that to the spawn. And I'm going to add another shape remove. And add a set target. I'm also going to choose parent. And then we can do a property test. Change the test type to distance to target. Go ahead and switch output side. And I can say if it is greater than, uh, let's just say 9.95. You change the channel to target. We're going to then connect that back up here to the empty spaces event. And then I can add a time test in here to the at target position event do something like maybe seven frames with a five frame variation and connect that back here to the find spaces event. All right, and then the last thing I need to do for the particles that leave the original position and come in here and land in the empty spaces event, they need to be set on group one. But this one needs to stay in here so that on the initial frame, the set target can find those particles. If I wanted to add more particles to reduce this voxel size, then what I would need to do is come back over here, create another tape measure, and measure in between two of these particles, 3.004. So then I would come back into the set target, come down here and say 3.1. And then here into this property test, and change this number on the 2.95. Could also um, maybe change the timing of the of this move to target to event age, and maybe give it like a 12 frame variation. 
and maybe add a little bit more randomness to it. And again, it's procedural, so if I were to select this box here and make a copy of it, and then come up here to the birth boxes operator and click add selected, it's going to automatically update. I really appreciate you taking the time today to watch the video. If there's any part of it that you're having problems with or you didn't understand, please leave a comment. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. But until next time, I hope you have a great day. Take care out there. Thanks again. See you.